popping it up, fellas. Just popping it up. Well, I think it's great waking up on a Monday morning knowing that you've played football and you saw it the 50. Do you ever wonder what's left for ageing footballers? Handball and kick on the beach with mates? Or is there a scrap heap somewhere? Well, not for the blokes you'll meet in this story. Snake. Bomber. And apples. For these three, all on the sunset side of 35, football is time out from a demanding day job. I mean, was your first day at work like this? I must admit, I was a bit, uh, um, a bit, a bit nervous, but uh, I noticed that uh, all the other people around me were, uh, weren't as nervous as I were, and they, were, they, uh, they seemed fairly confident. Oh, that was pretty daunting, yeah. That's, uh, especially with uh, water coming in, like the seals, when they're dry after a while, whether they take a while to sort of lubricate, so they'll actually let a bit of water in, and your eyes are about the size of dinner plates when you're thinking, this, is this right? But um, no, but after that, it's, it becomes the norm, and you, you know your routines, and you know what, what to expect. HMAS Stirling on Garden Island is home port for Australia's submarines. And OK, they're not nuclear, they're not trouble-free, but then this is not a Tom Clancy novel. For all that, the Collins-class subs are Australia's front line under the sea. And as for our footballing trio, well, they're submariners. Okay, my name's uh, David Appleby. I'm uh, a Chief Petty Officer. And, uh, I'm a CTSSM, which is a cryptologic system submarines. Um, they used to be called uh, electronic warfare. Uh, their main role is uh, in, in the intelligence community within the Royal Australian Navy. Um, and on submarines, we uh, carry out that role. Well, my name's uh, Lieutenant Bob Apps. My nickname's Snake. Um, I, I work at the uh, submarine branch sustainment. My uh, role there is to look after the uh, sustainment and supportability of all the uh, complex electronic systems on board the Collins class submarines. Check bridge and fin area clear to raise the HF mast. Scott Brown, uh, Warrant Officer Acoustic Warfare Analyst. Um, in submarines my job is to operate the combat system, uh, both on the tactical side and on the um, acoustic sensor side. And so from Scott, Bob and Dave, a little about them and a little about life under the ocean wave before we answer that football question. I had a bit of fascination about submarines. My grandfather was, um, was a Navy man. Um, whenever submarines came into Hobart to dock, he wouldn't let me go on one, so that increased the fascination even more. Um, on the surface, is probably the most uncomfortable, but uh, when we dive, it's, it's pretty much like we are now. Um, not a great deal of movement unless we're changing course or changing depth. And are you allowed to suffer from claustrophobia? Uh, no, you go through um, some psychological assessments before you become a submariner. And, um, and one of those would be to, to see whether you're uh, claustrophobic or not. Um, we don't, um, you, you wouldn't serve on submarines if you were, that's for sure. Well, you wouldn't last long, that's for sure. Time away from home is a big downside. Uh, time away from family, um, time with very little contact. You'll go to sea, you'll dive, and that's pretty much, pretty much it. You won't have any contact with the outside world. I came back from a, a seven month tour of Iraq last year on land and sea out there. Um, and that was a big, that's, that's a fair, fair amount of time from home and it, when you get home it, it is a bit of a feeling each other out again with, with the girlfriend or wife. Um, but, but no, you just get used to it and it's, I guess it's harder, just as hard on them as it is on you. I was part of the command team up there, uh, commanding uh, all the uh, ships from the coalition, controlling them all, protecting the, uh, the uh, oil platforms up there. I was also on land down, uh, down in Umkazar where they, they train their Marines, the Iraqi Marines, and it was more of a training role to get them up to speed to uh, take over the role when we left. I'm a naval reservist, so uh, I've, uh, I've done my time in the uh, permanent Navy. I now do uh, reserve work. I work 200 days a year. I, as I said, I work at the uh, submarine branch sustainment. Uh, we're uh, shorter personnel in the Navy than the permanent side, so uh, us old fellas um, ha have a role to fill. Uh, I think I have a lot of experience and uh, a lot to give back to the Navy as a whole. Yeah, but the parts have to come under the CCP, which means that uh, we're going to have to organise them. Well, who's doing the costing of it? Well, I think once it's uh, in your blood, uh, there's nothing you can do about it. I think you become infected by the virus. Well, I'm very proud to be a submariner, as I think pretty much all submariners are. It's a... Uh, um, they don't give these out to everyone. Indeed they don't. 
But Snake's just mentioned old fellas, and now that the lads are exchanging camouflage for football strip, you might be wondering just how old these three actually are. Bob's 50. Bob 50. 50. I'm 48 yes, this year, and Apple's? Uh, 36. 36. Uh, young he's, he's a young pup. He's, he's in cults. <laughs> <laughs> Snake, Apples and Bomber play Masters football. It's a competition that's all over the state, indeed across the nation. It's proper footy, but well, it's also different. How seriously do you guys take it? Well, there, there are a couple of meatheads, obviously. Then, uh, obviously in, in uh, Dave's age... What was that word? Meatheads? Meat, meat, meatheads, <laughs> yeah. Uh, in, in Dave's division, the, the 35 to 40s, there, there are a lot of guys that have just come out probably from... Uh, reserve grade from the, the Sunday and Saturday leagues. But they'll, they'll be a bit fired, but after a while I think they soon soon realise that, uh, that the actual ethos of the game is just to keep us playing football, keeping fit, um, so we can show off in front of our families. We, we can, uh, <laughs> can, talk I, can I get that straight? You go there to play for fun and not to win, is that right? That's correct. That's right. Yeah. We, don't keep, we don't keep score, we don't have a... We don't, don't have keep a score? Well, we don't officially keep score and we don't have a ladder to see where we ranked at the end of the year, we don't have finals, so you know we we are we, we are serious about our game, but not that serious that um, it's it it becomes competitive, yeah, and that uh, you know when we become competitive, then it gets a little bit um, you know it's not what we're trying to achieve in the game at, at, at our age. Are you guys actually at the end of football now, or is there life beyond us? No, no, you, oh, no, you can still play. Well, basically, the the whole idea of this community football is football from cradle to the grave. There's a guy that's 72 from Kalgoorlie who still yeah. plays football. Cobra Rogers, yeah. 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 Still playing at the age of 72. And we've got Patch Adams, who's one of our patrons. He's still umpiring and he's, 70, yeah. he's 74, 73 or something. So, um, look, there's, I've still got another couple of grades to go um, before I can retire. The uh, main aim of our game is just to get out there and participate. We're, obviously, we're, we're a bunch of older blokes, but we're not like the young blokes. You know, there's a few of us that. I reckon there's some uh, talent scouts that are sitting out there. <laughs> yeah. Our main aim is just to promote football. Our, our philosophy for Masters is football kicks and that's it. We, we don't worry about skill. As long as we've got two leagues and a half week, that's all you need. So what can we make of all this? Well, it's obvious. Any footballer with two legs and a still beating heart can play on. In fact, if he wants to, he can have a playing life longer than, say, the life of a Collins-class sub.